Hello and welcome to this demonstration video of the new Connection Editor in Qt Design Studio 4.3. Here you can see the new Connection Editor panel and we're going to start by looking a little bit at what the new Connection Editor can do. So we want to add a connection. We can use the plus button and this brings up a new panel for configuring your connection. Here we could change the target which is what the connection signal is sent from, although we're going to leave it with this button. Here are the various signals that this button has. We're going to stick with the click signal. And here is the new panel for all the different action types that you can use in configuring your connection. Let's start with the first one on the list. We're going to call a function. And in this case, we have a timeline animation in our file. And we're going to use this button to simply call the start on the animation. OK, now let's select this other button. Create a new connection for this button. Same signal, same target. We we'll call a function again on that timeline animation. And this time we'll call the stop function. So now we've created two very basic connections. We can run this in the live preview. And you can see that the animation is running by default. But if we now click the stop button, the animation stops. And if we click the start button, the animation will start again from the beginning. So we stop the animation and restart it from the beginning again. OK, now we're going to select this middle button, which we're going to use as a pause and resume button. We'll add a connection, the same signal, the same action function. Only this time, what we're going to do is select the timeline animation. And for the first um, block here, we're going to choose the resume. And we're going to use the new expression editor to add a condition, so to add an if statement for this connection. So we can do that by adding a condition. And what we want is to search for our timeline animation here. And we're going to choose the paused property. And this way, if that paused property is true, then we will call the resume function. Now we can add an else statement. And here you see we have a replacement for that block. And this time we're going to change the signal to the pause signal. So now, if it is paused, the animation will resume. And if the animation is playing, then the button will pause the animation. And we can run the live preview to take a look at that. And here you see that it's playing. And if we hit this button, it pauses the animation. And if we press it again, then the animation is resumed. So once more, paused and resumed. And of course, we can still stop and restart the animation with our previous buttons. OK, so let's look at the next action type available to us. And in this case, we're going to assign. And that means that we're going to assign a property from one item to another item. So we have another button here. And we'll come and add a connection to this button. We're going to keep using this click signal. And this time in the action menu, we'll choose a sign, which will give us a from and to block. So we can select a property from our source rectangle. And let's take the radius. And we can assign that to our target rectangle and we'll also assign this to the radius property of our target rectangle too. So this is our basic connection without any conditions. Let's run that in the live preview to show you how that works. And now when we click assign, we see that the radius property is sent from the source to the target rectangle. OK, let's come back in and add a condition using our expression builder. 
So we'll click the Add Condition button to bring up our expression editor, click inside the expression to start searching. And in this case, we're going to use our slider that we've added underneath. So we'll search for my slider. And we're going to choose the slider value. Now we'll go back into the expression editor. And now we have the operator pills from which we can select common operators. In this case, we want equal. And now we're going to give that a literal value by typing one and pressing enter. So this becomes now a literal. And now we have our condition. If the slider value is equal to one, then set the radius. We can also add an else statement here. If the slider value is not equal to one, we're going to leave everything the same, except we're going to change the border color instead of the radius. So we'll select the border color of the source rectangle, and we'll send that to the border color of our target rectangle. So now we see we have our condition. If that is true, we change the radius. And if it is not true, then we're going to change the border color. So let's run that in the live preview. And we can see here that the slider value is zero. So in this case, it changes the border color. But if we change that slider value to one, then it will change the radius as the initial condition is true here. Okay, so our third action type in the connection menu is a state change. This will change the state of the current component you're in. And you can see here that I've added three states, the blue, which is the default state, the pink with a pink outline for the rectangle, and gradient with a gradient fill for the rectangle. So back in the base state, I'm going to select my button, add a new connection to this button, target will stay the same, signal will be clicked. In this case, we would use the change state. Now this gives us the state groups, in which case we only have one here and we can choose a state to target for that initial connection. So let's choose the pink state. Now when we run the live preview, we press the button, you can see that the state changes to the pink state. Now let's use our expression editor to add a condition to this. You can add the condition, come in, and we're going to use the slider again, so let's search for my slider. Choose the slider value. Equals. And this time we'll type zero. So if the slider value equals zero, then the initial condition will be true, and the state will become the pink state. Now in our else block, we have another um, set of options for this state, and we can choose the gradient state here instead. Now, when we run this in the live preview, we will see that as the value is zero, it will change into the pink state. And if we change the slider value to one, then it will change into the gradient state. And in this case, we can change back to zero and move back to the pink state and vice versa for the gradient state. Now for the next type on our list, and in this case, it's set property, which means we're going to set a literal value that we can assign to a property of an item. So we have a very similar setup here with the button and the slider and a rectangle. We'll select our button, add a connection. Everything else we keep the same. And this time we'll choose the set property. So now we can choose our rectangle and the property we want to set as the opacity, and we're going to set that to 0 0.5. So if we run this in the live preview, press the button, we'll see that the opacity changes on our item. Now we can come back in and add a condition here. So we'll add the condition, go into our expression builder, we'll choose my slider and the value, choose equal, and then we'll type a literal value. We can choose zero again. And in this case, if slider equals zero, we'll change the opacity. 
to 0 0.5. And if slider is not equal to 0, we'll change the opacity to 0. Okay, so let's run that in the live preview. We can see the value is 0, so opacity is 0 0.5. And we've changed that to 1, and now the opacity is 0. And we can go back to 0, and back to 1, changing the opacity based on whether the if condition is met or not. Okay, now let's look at the final action type for the connection editor. In this case, it's a print message. So a very similar setup, although we don't need any other items here, we just have a button and a slider. We can select our button, add a connection, leave everything else the same, and this time the default is print message, so we can leave that as print message, and we can write our first message here as a string. So let's write hello world. Run that in the live preview. Now we just move our live preview up a little bit out of the way so we can see this output panel at the bottom right. Let's clear the output. Now when we press the button, we see that we're sending this hello world message. Now let's add a condition for this. Come back to our expression editor. Get my slider value again. Equals zero again. We use the same condition here. And in this case, we can add an else statement. We can change the message that we send here. So let's say, hi, mum. Now, when we run this in our live preview, clear that output, we can see that as the slider value is zero, it's hello world. And if we change that slider value to one, then it becomes hi mum. And back again, the hello world. And finally, while we have this expression here, I just want to show you that you can always bring up the code editor view directly from this panel if you want to write your own connection directly in code. And if you do write your own connection, that is a custom type not recognized as one of the other actions in this list. So here we'll add a second console log for this else block. And now we can see that this becomes a custom action type. And it will tell you that this can only be edited in code, which you can do by clicking on this button. And if you do edit your custom connection back into something, that the editor can recognize as one as the predefined types, it's going to rebuild that connection for you in the UI. So you come back to having all of your blocks, your condition, your expression editor, and your else statement as well. And that's it for this short demo video. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks very much for watching. And please feel free to get in touch with us with any feedback you have about this feature or about Design Studio in general.